We've been looking at examples of interpretations of higher derivatives, second derivatives, third, fourth, in lots of different physical contexts. But in our story, what really matters is not the applications to physics. And you really shouldn't worry about that so much. What really matters in our story is how these higher derivatives really permit better and better approximations of functions, polynomial approximations, as mediated through Taylor series. Recall what that formula is. We haven't looked at it in a while. How if we want to approximate f near a, moving out by some amount h, then what we get is this polynomial series where the derivatives of f at the expansion point give you the coefficients in that series. If we write out, if we expand out what those terms are, we begin, of course, with f at a. Then we have the first derivative of f at a times h. Then the second derivative of f at a times h squared, but with that 1 over 2 factorial out in front. Then we add the third derivative of f at a times h cubed, but with a 1 over 3 factorial in front. Now, of course, you've seen this before. You're used to this formula by now, but I want you to think about what is happening, why things look the way they do. Why is it that when we're trying to interpret derivatives, it seems as though there are lots of interpretations of the first derivative, and there's lots of interpretations of the second derivative, but when you get to higher derivatives, it's a little more difficult to get really good, solid, physical intuition for what's happening. Well, the reason is because of the way Taylor expansion works. It's the lower order terms that dominate in the approximation. These are the things that are most important, that are most significant. If you think about what happens when we graph the function and start writing out the terms of the Taylor series, of course, if we look at the zeroth and first order terms, we get the tangent line. And you're used to that from when you first learned about derivatives. When we add the second order term, we get the best quadratic approximation to the function about the expansion point. When we add the third order terms, we get the best cubic approximation to the function at the tangent point, and on and on and on. But this is why the lower order derivatives are the most significant, why they dominate in the polynomial approximation. And this is why it's the low order derivatives that you have the best physical intuition for. Now, I want you to take a careful look at this formula for Taylor expansion. You know this formula, of course. You've gotten used to it. But now, take a look at it with fresh eyes and see. What do you notice? Let's think there's something about that Taylor formula that is reminiscent of other things that we have talked about, other things that we have seen. Why is it that you've got the, the 1 over k factorial things in front of all those terms in the Taylor series? Why is it that that reminds us of our story's hero? Remember, we began this entire series talking about the exponential function, understanding it through its Taylor series. Now, which comes first, the exponential function or the Taylor series? Exponentiation is a deep idea. It is the deep idea that animates everything that we have been doing in this series. It is an essential part of the story that we are continuing to tell.